Hey everyone, so in this video I wanted to do something just very simple and to go over what collisions are in Unreal Engine. Now it's a pretty standard simple feature, however if you're brand new to Unreal or just game development in general, uh, maybe you just never had an actual explanation of collisions, as well as just a few things you can do with collisions in Unreal Engine that you may or may not have known already. Uh, so we're just going to go into those. Um, this is gonna assume that you do know how to navigate in Unreal Engine, so you know how to go through blueprints, uh, get to the settings and et cetera. Uh, I will show you exactly what I'm gonna do in the videos, but nonetheless, to navigate through and kind of understand what you're looking at, uh, it does expect a little bit of understanding, but I will try to keep it as simple as possible. So let's get into it. So in this tutorial, I did make a brand new project using the first person template. And then from here, uh, I didn't change anything other than I think I accidentally deleted a cube over there. Usually I think there's three stacked up like these ones, uh, but I I don't know, I, I was playing around with the cube. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, getting into it, let's kind of just explain what collision is and then as well as traces, just because you're gonna see traces nearby collisions. Though I'm not really going too in depth with traces or plan to do um, like um, examples of traces in this. But to kind of give an example of what collision is, um, it's essentially invisible force fields around objects or designated areas that you could choose that tell you how other objects could interact with other objects. So uh, a simple idea is just for demonstration. If we were to walk into this wall, you notice how we're not going through it. And that's because it has that invisible field of collisions that I'm referring to. It's also the same reason why my character doesn't float through the floor. But if we were to actually just open up the character and we typed in collision, and then from here, we see that we have two collision presets opening that if we actually did no collision and no collision we're gonna fall through the floor right now and that's it and we fall through so just like that if we actually i'm just gonna control z control z sets it right back to normal i'll go into a little bit more details on the collision presets in a second uh, but to further my explanation the Collisions allow us to prevent such things like falling through the floor. We make sure that our character has a collision that does not go through um, other collisions. So this floor is actually blocking our character from falling through. It's also All right, so Unreal Engine crashed on me, but it's very similar towards like if you fire, you'll notice that this bounces off the wall. If I fire at these cubes, they interact and they float around. Um, Collision allows us to enable checking this, and that is how you can just fire bullets that bounce. So it all works as ways to detect whether things are uh, the type of object you allow it to interact with, such as thing that you could use, like maybe there's a fire on the floor, but you want it to burn the player, but you don't want it to burn the objects that are there. Uh, maybe you'll apply special effects for those that get burnt. So you want to be able to check to see, is it a character or is it just like, I don't know, just a barrel that's rolling around, whatever the case may be. I mean, typically barrels catch on fire. It doesn't matter. I digress. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's go into our bullet because... There's a few things to go over with collision. If we were to select on the collision component, type in collision to kind of open this up and understand. I'm going to briefly go into kind of a basic understanding of things that are available here. One thing to note is that the generate, generate overlap events is what allows you to make sure that you can have um, events fired off whenever like you have in fact collided with something that fits the collision type so if you wanted to interact with a character this is where you use the character overlap event right there however if this is turned off this will never fire off even if you have a collision component so just make sure that if you want 
uh, overlap events, you do need this turned on for the component you wish to allow overlapping. If you have multiple components, just make sure you have generate overlap events for which component you wish to allow it. You can also turn it off for certain ones. So for example, if you have a sword or a, a sphere sp spear that's like three feet, but you don't want the spear to generate overlaps for like NPCs when you're not in combat or whatever the case may be. Uh, you want to make sure that if something fires and accidentally hits the sphere, you're not the one taking damage because, I mean, that's it's like the old Call of Duty. I died by getting shot in the foot, uh, getting one tapped on hardcore. I don't know. Um, I don't play Call of Duty anymore. Anyways, moving on. The next thing is can characters step up on? This is very simple. It's just as the long name describes, this is what will decide whether you can actually step onto something. So if there is a cube and this is set to no, the character is not gonna be able to step up to that cube. So you can set it to no, you can set it to yes. Yeah, they can. For this bullet, it's technically on yes because it just doesn't matter. If it collides into something, it's going to get destroyed or it's just going to bounce off. Uh, so it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you shoot a character, you, you're, the character can't step up on it because they're just going to take damage. You can not hit no if you want to be extra tidy. Um, that's perfectly fine. And then you also can set to only the owner can step on it. So if this was like a, I don't know, something a player specifically on, you could set it to where only they can. Um, Anyways, on to collision presets. So presets are a list of collisions that Unreal Engine has provided to us already. They have created it built into the system by default. So these are everything that is available to us. And typically they all have a meaning in their own uh, on what they are typically used for. But you are, however, able to create your own. So. If we see this entire list here, we'll notice that there are three columns. There are these three options above, but I'm not going to go into them in a second because you kind of have to understand what these three columns are first. So we have the ignore column. It's kind of as it sounds. What it does is by hitting ignore, you will not interact with any of the ones that you set to ignore. So if I hit ignore on this, I will never collide with anything. This is basically the same as saying, no collision. I won't in interact with anything. The bullet actually won't collide. So if we actually kept that, went into our game, picked this up, our bullet's just going to phase through everything. So I could shoot straight through the floor, all the boxes. Oh, I accidentally closed that. And then I did control Z just to undo that so that if we go back, it's not on all ignore. So that is what ignore does. So you can specify certain things that you do want it to ignore. A very common thing is that when you have objects in the world and you don't want it to interact with your camera, you just hit that ignore button. This is something most tutorials show you. Maybe they don't explain, but they just go into it. And usually the reason you want to ignore is just so that if I was to turn a corner in like a third person game, I don't want my camera to suddenly move so that it can see the character. Uh, so it's usually a settings with the camera, which causes you to automatically change your point of view so that your character is always in front. Um, and that's what the colliding does. So just keep in mind with that and then Going into overlap, what overlap does is it will fire off that, hey, we have overlapped. So for example, if you walked into a cube and it has overlap on, it will tell you, hey, this character is in fact touching us, but you can still go through it. So it wouldn't stop the character from going through so if there was a cube on the floor and the character just walked through the cube, so they would be able to just phase directly through the cube. That's what overlap does. It's 
kind of the middleman of both ignore and block. So it doesn't block you from going through objects, but it still will tell you that it's happening. So it allows you to gather information if you ever need to. Block is exactly as it sounds. It is the exact opposite of ignore. It stops everything from going through. And by everything, I mean just a specific slot that you say that it does. Uh, you can, however, select to block all, and it will stop every trace, every object from going through. I did Control Z just to undo that button. And right now, what it's set is that it's going to block these specific objects that all have this set. <clears throat> so if we were to actually go into here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blueprint off this cube. So in case you didn't know, if you select on any of the preset things that are available here, you can select this, convert this actor into a reusable blueprint, blueprint class. I'm just going to go BP test. It will take this current cube and I'll turn it into an actor. And then from here, if we were to type collision, we'll notice that this has a preset where it's blocking everything. So if we went back to our bullet, we'll see that we also block things, which means we will collide with this specific block. However, if we were to change this to no collision, we go into the world and we'll shoot. You'll notice it's going straight through and I can hit other blocks through. And this is also very similar to how traces work because notice how I'm going through. Traces typically allow you to check between two points if there is any type of object between two locations. So if I wanted to check between me and 30 feet in front and just do like, like a line trace, there's different type of traces. There's like a box trace where it puts a box in front of you and it goes forward. A line trace is a simple one. It's just like a straight line. So anyways, not going too far into it, but just know that there are different types of traces for you, different purposes. Back on topic. So if I was to do a line trace from here, which is has no collision, it won't interact with this cube because just like I can go through this, if I did a line trace, it'll just go straight through until it hits this object, which does block. So depending on what I specify, I'd be able to check the distance between me and that cube over there. So that's the purpose of line trace. Of course, there are many uses for it. Uh, many different things that you could use both collisions and traces. Uh, yeah, you can ignore that because I'm just showing you some stuff. Let me control Z to undo that. But that is what we can use. Ignore overlap and block. The next thing is to talk about the actual presets that Unreal Engine has given us. So there's a few that you can read that will tell you just exactly what it is. No collision means that everything is going to be set to ignore. So if I hit no collision, uh, it will actually just change collision enabled to no collision and it won't interact with anything. Everything phases through. Now, if you go into block all, we'll notice that all block has now turned to block all. It means everything will get blocked from it. You can also check to overlap all, which does very similarly, where it just says it will overlap everything. Now there is projectile, and this is a custom made one by Unreal Engine for the first person project, and that's why it still shows as blocked. Um, it's just how they created it. We'll go into how you could create your own, but yeah, overlap all or sets overlap all. So those are the three basics. And all of these other ones are set to very specific things. Ignore only, it will ignore only a pawn. Um, it also counts vehicle in there too, but um, yeah. And you have overlap only pawn, which also will overlap both the pawn and vehicle. 
And you also notice how the camera gets set to ignore because it's just very common to ignore the camera. But anyways, there are lots of different ones that are available here. Uh, projectile set to block all. It's basically the same as just block all. <laughs> Except if you actually went to projectile, we'll notice that we have quarry only. Let me just undo that. So yeah. there are a bunch of presets that are available. I'll show you that we can make our own. Um, the last thing to go over is just the collision enabled and object type. Now I'm not going to go too in depth into these different types. Um, I'm going to give kind of a brief explanation of them. So quarry only, if you actually hover on top of it, it is only used for raycasts, sweeps, and overlaps. So kind of think of it as, um, it checks throughout the space and not physics. And for that, you kind of have to understand what physics is. So and for physics, it's just kind of like, <sighs> I'm not a math major, so I can't give you like the best definition, but think of like how it affects the body. If something hits an arm, the body flails around, that is physics. Um, another thing is just like the mass of an object. So you'd be able to calculate if this object is too heavy, the character can't push it. Um, so like if something weighs like 400 kilograms and your character is 50 kilograms, you're not going to be able to move that object, but that object definitely can move you. So there's just things like that. Uh, so of course, there you could probably get some better explanations on physics, but that is the difference. And if you hover on top, it actually tells you physics uh, affects rigid bodies and constraints. And it does not get impacted by quarry, which is basically like the flip side. So there's two of those. And then you have collision enabled, which will enable both quarry and physics. So you'll be able to block everything spatial as well as any type of body or constraints. And then we have probe only, which is just contact data. So if you hover on top of it, um, it is only used for probing the physics simulation of the rigid body and constraints. So just collecting data, but it doesn't actually affect anything. And then from here is just pretty much the opposite. It's query and probe. And it just, it will allow checking the data for the physics simulation. However, it won't actually apply physics. So yeah, there's contact data. Trigger hits, callbacks, and contacts will appear in contact modification. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know what that last part meant, but yeah, that is available. And then we have object types. These are just like labels that you can give to objects. So if you ever want to make sure um, to check whether something is just a projectile, whether it has different types of blocking, if it has a projectile, you can do certain things with it. That's kind of the explanation of this tab. I hope the understanding of ignore, overlap, and block kind of helped you the most. Uh, I know the collision enabled could have had better descriptions, but honestly, I'm not the best on explaining physics. So I'll have to apologize for that. But how we can go about creating our own presets. So for this, this is also where you'd create your own line trace. So if you saw where we only have two line traces, uh, we'll be able to create our own. We'll also be able to create our own object response. You can create your own object type and preset. You want to go into f edit, project settings. From here, we want to look for collision. And from here, you have object channels. You'll notice how we see projectile. And like I said, for a first person shooter, Unreal Engine has already created this. But let's say we want to add our own. And let's just name this testing. And you can also set whether um, every object that you currently have will just have the default response and all future ones. So typically, if you're adding a object channel, you usually put it to ignore as the default. However, things like projectile, you want it to block everything. Uh, but you may not want every single thing to block because if you're Think of your use case that you're using for. Usually I have used it, just um, set it for specific things. So if I wanted to make sure a player had a specific 
channel, I would make sure that it was set to ignore for everything and I only used it to block on very specific things. So you hit accept, everything will automatically set it to ignore. If we go back to our projectile, we'll go into here where I think we compile. Yeah, and then now we'll see it's defaulted to ignore and we see that testing available there. So every type of object with collision will now have that populated there. <clears throat> very similar to where you see trace channels. You can add a new trace channel. You can set what the default should be. So for the example, we'll say block and we'll just name this, um, I don't know, purple. And if we go back, oh, we'll notice that it now shows up here. So this allows for all your traces to have your own custom trace if you want to use it that is not considered visibility or camera. Uh, usually I create different line, a different line trace uh, because I don't want to affect visibility and camera. Uh, line trace, if you actually just type in line trace, you have all of these available. You have multi -line, line trace. You can also just type in trace and you'll notice that we have all of these traces available. We have spheres, multi sphere capsules, boxes, lines, and then a box. Hmm. So that is all available there. If you were actually select on one, you have a trace channel and now we can select purple. I know I'm not going too far into traces, but uh, I have just been explaining a little bit because I want to make sure you guys at least know it exists. And then last thing is under preset. These are all the presets Unreal Engine has already provided us. If you wanted to get rid of them, you absolutely could, though I don't delete them. Um, whatever your preference is, if you want to just recreate and get rid of the clutter, you go about doing that. This is where we also see the projectile preset that we saw on the first person, where we have it to projectile at the bottom. Defaults to that. We can also add in a new one. And what this would do is that we can create our new one that will be available. So for this, we're gonna name this, I don't, I don't know why I'm doing colors, but we'll do blue. You can set whether collision will be set by default. So I'm gonna go with just query only. You can select what type of world or what type of object this would be. And for this case, I'm gonna have this as a testing object. You can also give a description. This is a test. And then you can set whether it's going to be blocking everything. So I'm going to actually just say everything's going to overlap and it's going to block testing. And then just like that, if I hit OK, we'll now see that we have added this at the bottom. If we go over here, let's compile so it updates. And if we go down, we have blue available. And if we hover on top, we have the description. This is a test, just like projectile preset for projectiles. And then UI, it says that. So if we hit blue, we see everything is updated, everything overlaps, and it blocks testing. So that's how you can go about creating your own. So I know this gave a bit of explanation on what collision is, terrible explanation on traces uh, and physics, but I hope this lets you know on how to utilize collision, gives you a basic understanding of what everything does and how to move forward while utilizing the different types of collisions and traces.